on behalf of the family, we thank you for coming today as we come to remember and uh, to celebrate the life of Gene Alley. Um, before we begin, we would encourage you to take a look at your phones and make sure that they are in the silent or off position so that we will not be interrupted. And then everyone is encouraged uh, to join us in congregational singing. If you knew anything about Gene, you knew that he loved singing. And, uh, and so this is certainly a fitting way for us to begin our remembrance and celebration of Gene by singing from uh, some of his and Patty's favorite hymns. We'll begin with Amazing Grace and Will Fox will be leading us in singing.
This world is not my home. Uh, I'm wondering if we might should just stand for this song. It's hard to sing this one. So this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. family. Gene loved Patty. And a few years ago on their 24th anniversary, he wrote this to Patty. God has blessed me with a wonderful, loving, and supporting soulmate who is so talented, extremely intelligent, beautiful inside and out. Patient, logical, humorous, she gets and laughs at my corny jokes. 
Harley Ryder, great mother and role model to our kids. Logical, did I say that? And most importantly, she loves the Lord, which shines brightly in everything she does. Gene loved this life because he loved Patty. And we want you to know, and you know this already, but I'm here to say it. We're, he we're here for you. Amen. We love you too. He loved his kids and his grandkids. And when he wasn't talking to me about things church, which was pretty much every time we got together, but when, he, when we weren't talking church, you don't know who he was talking about, right? His family, his kids, his grandkids. He looked forward to spending time with you all. And he loved you so. He was always looking for ways to, looking for what you needed and how to provide what you needed. Always. He always had something going on for one or a bunch of you or all of you. He wanted to make sure that you had everything that you needed and some of what you wanted. And I think he did a pretty good job with that. He loved people in general and he wanted to take care of all of us. He was doing the same thing for us, looking for, looking for our, our, our needs, whether they were uh, material or physical or emotional or more, most importantly spiritual. He was looking out for us. He was always looking to reach out to each and every one of us on God's behalf because he loved God and he loved us. He especially loved the ones in the church that were close to him and those in the church who were not so close. He wanted all of us to know what he knew about God and God's love. But he just generally loved people and he liked enjoying life with people. When we were in Panama, uh, we were in this place it was a clearing in the jungle, so there wasn't much of an open area. And the, the hillside that we were on, and it was a hillside, it was, it was quite angled. No flat spot. But here comes Gene with a soccer ball. <laughs> and he bounced that soccer ball out in the middle of this area. And before that ball bounced three or four times, the kids were all around him. And his face lit up see all those kids and their faces were lit up and that's what made him run. That's what made him go in those, in those times. It was hot and humid and the work was long and hard, but he took time during his breaks to come out and play football with the kids and they loved it. He loved it. It was good to see him enjoy life in that way. And you probably know if he's been a part of your life and, and I'm sure he has since you're here, that he enjoyed seeing you enjoy life too. He enjoyed very much seeing each of us succeed in the ways that we that we could and that we uh, that we were able. And sometimes, because of his help, we did very well. And I'm thankful, and I'm sure you are too. He loved the Lord's church and wanted it to grow, not so much for the sake of the church growing, but for our sake getting more and more of us to know the blessings that are in Christ Jesus. And he also loved our republic. Oh, there's some people who know his politics. <laughs> and how could you help but know his politics? <laughs> right? And you know why? As with the Bible and the church, and our republic, our constitution, Gene believed that that was the right thing for us to be engaged in, the right thing for us to enjoy. He was about rules somewhat. Some he didn't like, like the rest of us, but he was about what was written, both in the Bible and when it came to the Constitution. 
it was important for him to us, for us to understand what the Bible was about and what the Constitution was about because he thought that was what was best for us. He realized that God's blessings come to those who are closest to him. He also realized that the, the blessings of liberty come because not because the government grants it, but because God has given us unalienable rights. And our government is based, our founding documents are based on the principle that God is our creator. All men are created equal. And we have those unalienable rights that are granted to us by our creator. And so, if you know his politics, he wasn't trying to win an argument for the sake of winning an argument. He wasn't trying to convince you for the sake of winning you over to his side of things. He was discussing politics and religion because he loved you. And he wanted you to know what was right. And we can be, we can be thankful for that. One of the songs that he asked us to sing is the Battle Hymn of the Republic, because he loved the Republic. And, uh, uh, well, we're going we're gonna to try to, uh, we're gonna try to do that. Battle Hymn of the Republic. Uh, all the verses, they were all important to him. And I will... try to lead it. Not because I feel like I'm confident at this particular moment, but because he asked me to. <clears throat> Let's sing. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the
think we should sing some more. But we need some. Uh, we need to do some reminiscing and some uh, uh, thinking about how Jean has been a blessing in, in our lives. And think a little bit more about him. I don't think he wanted us to spend a lot of time. As a matter of fact, I know he didn't want us to spend a lot of time with a eulogy, the praise part. But uh, he can't stop us now. <laughs> and he deserves it. So um, if there's, uh, we're going to start with uh, family and move out in Gene's circles from there. So if if you would like to come up and say something, let's let's keep it. We, we do have a time constraint, so let's keep it uh, uh, fairly short. You say what you need to say, but um, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, Gene's brother Mark has uh, has some words for us. You come on up here, Mark. scenario on you um, guys. So this is a conversation on a phone that could happen any time in the last 15, 20 years. See if you recognize it if you've ever talked to my brother on the phone. This is me. <laughs> what those things are, that's me. I don't know. And this will be me. Crumble at all the cars that come by. Now, you know Gene. He owned his own business. He was very comfortable giving other people things to do. <laughs> no problem with that at all. So you know what position he played when we were playing football. Mm -hmm. Quarterback. No question about it. And we just, you go this way down, how long do that? And it was wonderful. And that went on in our adulthood. I remember coming back and, and staying for Thanksgiving. And the feast in the afternoon, and we go play football in the morning across from Queen Macca College in the field there with a whole bunch of guys. And we played football. And guess what? Quarterback. <laughs> no question, he was there. And that just, that's Gene, that's the Gene that you know. He's just uh, full of life and full of direction and he wants things to go. He, he's not resistant in saying, this is the way it's going to go. Um, basketball more, Brent and I, than Gene, but we played that. But then there's another sport. And if you're not from San Diego, you hardly believe that we have a professional hockey team. But Gene and Brent and I and Kip Smith across the street, we go to these games all the time. We're big, big San Diego Gold fans. And so we built uh, a hockey net out of wood and chicken wire, closed the garage door, that was the backstop, got our hockey sticks. I think there was a slide earlier that this, oh, for me, this is just great. Um, and we would play hockey. What was our puck? A tennis ball. <laughs> We weren't really good at roller skating, so we just played in our tennis shoes, and we would just have it out, two on two, two on one, even one on one, and we just played hockey all the time. It was just a wonderful sport, and that continued on throughout our, our love of hockey all the way through. Uh, even in the last month or so before he died, I would send him a YouTube video of a sensational hockey play, and he would email me back and go, yeah, check this one out. And it was just never end. It was just great. So sports is just a huge part. Um, I guess I won't go into the Christmas story because that'll take up too much time. But it was just sports related. Uh, just sports, it's great. And I, so my love of sports started because Gene had a love of sports. And so we just grew up playing as kids all the way through. And then the other arena I'd like to share uh, a little bit about is music. Rock and roll music. 1960s, 1970s, uh, big influence, and Gene started it all. And that's tough in my family because my parents did not like rock and roll music, and that's an understatement. <laughs> so it was difficult to get interested and play rock and roll music. You know, because my brother Bob built us a stereo, we could actually listen to records. Just had to time it right, so perhaps when my father wasn't at home, <laughs> it was tough. But Gene started a record collection. I remember when he brought home the first Santana album. Oh, it was great. And he started bringing more albums. And because he's one of those go-to, let's get things done, he was always managing whatever business he was in. He was manager. Jack and Box, he was the manager. He worked for uh, Warehouse Records and Tapes in Chula Vista. He was the manager. And so when you work for a record store and you're managing a record store, 
like you get access to lots of records. And so his collection grew at home. And so he would let us play. And so it was really cool. And so my love of music started then. And of course, if you've seen some of the pictures, you knew his hair grew out. <laughs> the big mutton chop side limbs. <laughs> the easy riding chopper motorcycle. Oh, I was a wannabe hippie at 13 and I was too young. <laughs> and my brother lived it, kind of. But he was a business guy. So although he looked like he was just a little lifer, he wasn't. He just had to grow. <laughs> In fact, I think my father didn't realize that and he kicked him out of the house. Okay, you can't work around like that. That's a disgrace. But no, he didn't realize the business part of Gene's life. But he loved music so much. And I later on, like between college students, I worked for a record store and my collection grew. So Brent and Gene and I had these wonderful record collections on vinyl. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful influence. So those two arenas, sports and music, was a, I got my start with my brother Gene. And I'd like to share this little story. If you can believe this, I think you can. He merged the two. He merged music and competitiveness. So back in the day, this is before I could drive, so I'm young, he had some cool car. I think it might have been a Chevy Coupe. 1960s stuff, I don't know. But I was going in the car with him, and we were gonna go somewhere. And it's not normal to just go somewhere. You gotta be competitive. So what did he do as we're driving away? He turns on the radio. He says, you ready to play? All right, KGB. Turns on the radio, and three seconds later, it turns off. We're racing to see who could identify the song and the artist before we were <laughs> And if he didn't, we turn back up. Another three seconds, to turn. And then we put out another three seconds, and then we just let it go, and then the next song comes on. Three seconds, boom. So this is where we're driving away. It's like, you can't be not competitive with Gene. It's just the way it goes. So those are anecdotes that I, I wanted to share with you growing up. And my brother Gene was just full of life, as you said. And it got me interested in sports and in music and rock and roll. And I'll leave you with a phone conversation that happened, oh, probably a week or two before he died. Remember, this isn't me. This is Gene. Okay, Gene, good talking to you. Uh, be strong. I'll call you sometime next week. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for calling. Love you, brother. Yeah, me too. Talk to you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. That's not good enough. What? I want you to say it. It. <laughs> No, 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 you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. I want you to say you love me. I just did. No, I said I love you, and you said, me too. <laughs> Wait a minute, now, if I see you, you tell me that you think Return of the Jedi is just great, and I say me too, haven't I said it? It's not the same thing. Shut up and just tell me. <laughs> I love you too. Thank you, Mark. Any other family wants to come up here and share something? might be a good uh, time to say that after we're finished here, we're all invited to the Alley House to visit with family. So um, I'm sure there will be reminiscing going on at that, uh, at that place and that occasion. So uh, any, any other, any other family? Daryl, did you have a phone? Gene was passionate. I think he was passionate about everything. He certainly was passionate about you, Patty. And it's kind of hard to think about him without you. 
And throughout the years, you were always there. And I think that just speaks so well of the two of you, the relationship that you had. It was obvious that you loved one another. And you were perfect for one another. And you could see that in Gene's eyes. You could see it in how he interacted with you in public, and certainly when he talked about you. He was passionate about politics. How many of you ever got an email? <laughs> One of my favorite memories of uh, spending time with Gene was actually he and I uh, going downtown to a prayer breakfast where Mike Huckabee was the keynote speaker. And somewhere in my computer file, somewhere there's a photo, I think, of both Gene and myself with Mike Huckabee in the middle. And, uh, and Gene called me up and said, hey, Darrell, would you like to go? And uh, I was kind of honored that, you know, that he thought of me to go and take part in that event with him. And uh, it remains a favorite memory. Uh, he was passionate about his politics. He was, um, he was passionate about the church and wanting what was best in his view for the church, always looking out for what was best. He was kind of a bottom line guy and uh, I think sometimes a cut to the chase guy. And so sometimes he chafed at the business meetings uh, because if you've ever been in a business meeting, you know those things are interminable. And, uh, you know, Jane was like, okay, well, let's just make a decision. Um, but he was there, and he was a participant. And, like you said, he, he did not mind giving other people things to do. He was also, I always thought, a good team player when it came to working with him here at Bostonian. He was... Uh, he was passionate about his family. One of the one of my, I guess, most vivid memories is uh, years ago when Brad got hurt in Iraq. <clears throat> and the passion that he had for you and for Tricia and his concern. I think, you know, obviously any father, any father-in-law would have had some but, I mean, it was just, it hurt him to the core. And he was concerned about your well-being. He often talked to me about Brian and his love for you and concern. He was a passionate man. And I think all of us, have benefited because of his passion. And he will be missed. I was asked to share a, um, um, some me a message from Jim and Colleen Milhouse. The, they sent this to, the, to Sonia Dumigan, and uh, so she asked me to read this. And so this is from, from Jim. My wife, Colleen, and I would like to express our sincere condolences on the passing of Gene to you, Patty, and to the family. We have known Gene for about 40 years. It was here at Bostonia where we first met Gene. We have such heartwarming memories over the 40 years. The gracious invites to the yearly Halloween costume parties, birthdays at Rock and Baja Lobster, Sushi nights where they introduced Colleen to wasabi. <coughs> Interestingly enough, she has learned to eat it. Not me. I'll stick to my bento platter. His acting, singing talents were amazing and fun. Gene, Patty, and Trish gave us great joy along the years with theater musicals that we attended. We both had Goldwing motorcycles, and we have taken a couple of trips together. We created a logo for our group that we put on our shirts. It had an eagle in the middle. Gene loved eagles. And the saying was, on a wing and a prayer. 
One trip was a weekend to Visalia for a Goldwing rally. The other unforgettable trip was to Palm Springs, Vegas, Sedona, and back through Yuma. This was in late May. The first day was great to Palm Springs. The second day was not so great. It was to Vegas. We didn't want to take the freeway, so we took the back roads from Joshua Tree. We thought it would be a shorter way. Well, that year, I think it was about 120 degrees. At least it felt like it. We got a taste of what hell might feel like. <laughs> Halfway, we ended up in Laughlin, Nevada. Then we somehow finally got to Vegas. For some reason, the ladies did not want to do anything the next day. <laughs> the rest of the trip was great. Jean was generous. At a time when I was laid off of work, he had hired Colleen when we needed it, and then later me. Can't tell you what that meant for Colleen and I. He, helped us through a difficult time in our lives, and we will be forever grateful. Jean. Jean and Patty, we will always remember and cherish those memories we had together. With love and fond memories, you will always be in our hearts and our thoughts. Miss you, buddy. Jim and Colleen Miller. Thank you, Daryl. Is there anyone? Well, let me let me start with this. If Jean was ever your Bible teacher in Bible class or some other uh, some other um, occasion where he was sharing the Bible with you, will you raise your hand? Right. Of those who have um, been in Bible class with Jean. Would you like to come up and tell us about that? Or anything else you'd like to talk about? Gene was just one of the coolest guys. He really was. And I can't help but think of Gene without thinking of teaching Bible class. I mean, that was really one of my first memories for him. Uh, I was about, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 when he always came to Bostonia. And I can remember he was teaching the, the high school class and I was still in the junior high. It's almost like the, the guy who's in AAA baseball that wants to go to the majors. You know, you're waiting for your, your call, so to speak. But Gene taught for a long time. And uh, I can remember years later, uh, he and I uh, teaching together, which for me was re really cool, and uh, just just have so many good memories of Gene from from you know those those stat shirts he would bring to the Turkey Bowl, uh, those red shirts, uh, and, and the times he would have us over to his house, and, and he had that great hockey game that we would play for hours and hours, and just so many great memories. But but the one thing that sticks out, and David, I appreciate you you bringing up this point is when he taught the high school class, I can't ever remember the curriculum or, or the subject that, that, he, that we would focus on, but I, I remember very vividly a drawing he used to use, and uh, it, it was something that if you have small children, it would be easy for them to duplicate. Uh, and, and all it was was just a vertical line. And coming out of the vertical line on each side was something that looked like an L on each side. And what it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be uh, an imagery of, of someone who was straddling the fence. And it was just that idea that uh, as a Christian, you're constantly struggling with, I've got one foot with God, and, and I've got one foot in the world. And that was just a, such a vivid image, and it's something I can just think about even today. And what a great lesson that is for kids and, and really uh, for us as adults. But there's a story in the Old Testament that talks about a, a king who died. And the line is, a great man has fallen in Israel. And I would say when it comes to genealogy, a great man has fallen. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Anyone else? 
else. Alan? You ready? I have a five minute version, a 15 minute version, and a two hour version. As you can see, I'm not a part of the Hawaiian shirt club. I, I didn't get an invitation. I see all these Hawaiian shirts and I know that it's gotta be related to Jean somehow, but I don't have a Hawaiian shirt on because I, never, I don't believe I ever got invited to it, or if I did, I forgot about it. So, um, as I was co contemplating all the wonderful memories and stories that I could tell about Jean, I mean, crazy stuff. Like the time we ran a 1964 Chevy Impala through my office wall. Um, to, I got pictures of that too. Uh, the time we enjoyed flying over San Diego in the airplane and, and just enjoying the nature of the the ocean and you know and such and and you know the many many times that we double dated my wife and I uh, Judy double dated with Patty and and Jean we did that for years it was a wonderful time but as I thought about all these different things I came across on LinkedIn Jean's own words which I thought were much better uh, to use than any story that I could ever say. And what's remarkable to me about his words is it's been the same theme and echo that, you know, David has been, I, I thought he maybe saw the same thing I saw on LinkedIn. But the question on LinkedIn was, is, it's still there, you can look it up. What are your most important goals? His first important goal listed online that you'll see, go to heaven. Doesn't that sound like Jane, right? Number two, take a bunch of people with me. <laughs> Sounds like Jane, right? Number three, treat others with courtesy and respect. Number four, always follow the golden rule. And finally, number five, spend more time with my family. And when I saw that last one, I couldn't help but take the liberty of saying, I know what he means by that. I, he's in this public forum. He's talking, you know, everybody's gonna think he's talking about his earthly family. But that's not what he was meaning. He was meaning his brothers and his sisters in Christ, because that's what Jim was about. That was the five minute version, right? Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, anyone else? Okay. I got it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to suck it up. <laughs> Make a turn. Okay. So I'm not going to look at you guys because I'll cry. But three years ago, um, <laughs> I found out I had a tumor, and two weeks later, found out my dad had one. So for time, um, going up to my surgery, which was about six, seven months later, uh, I was really worried about my family. <laughs> uh, what was going to happen to them? if something happened to my surgery. And my dad, in one of our conversations, told me, Brian, I want you to go read Matthew 6, verse 25. And I did that. And I know I don't have it here, but um, essentially it talks about not worrying because God will provide. And after that day, it was almost like he took the biggest weight off my back. And it became one of those things that ever since anything that has come up 
in our lives. I just think back to that. And I was just telling my uncle before this started that the day of my surgery, three surgeons walk in the room and I'm on my Kindle and they're like, what are you reading? I was like, the Bible. And they thought it was weird that I was reading the Bible on a Kindle. But <laughs> um, after talking to me and asking me all these questions, they're like, you do realize how serious the surgery you're having is? I go, yeah. But if I worry about it, are you going to do better? Are, are, are you going to, you know, try harder? And they were like, no, it's going to be the same instance. And so I said, well, I guess there's no sense in worrying about it because I can't change it. And I got through that surgery and then spent, thankfully, the next couple of years just talking to my dad which was, uh, as Eddie put it, I mean, anybody who was in that high school class, they know one-liners that he came up with to solve any situation. Because um, a lot of times, uh, I mean, something that has always come up with him was, I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, I mean, I know Robert's right there. Um, when he would play, he came in and he played Queen. And it was the song, I want it all and I want it now. And he said, that was the problem that a lot of people had today, was they want all the stuff, but they don't want it to work for that stuff. You know, they just, they, they want to go to the end point. And there are things like that that I am so thankful that everything I ever saw in my dad was helping others. So it, a lot of times when I first meet people and they're saying they're having a problem, just thinking about him, it's like the first thing out of my mouth is what can I do to help? You know, and I know that is a blubbering way to say he gave some of the best advice I could ever have. And thank you. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Great story. I'm glad you decided to come here. The last, uh, almost everyone who's been up here so far has touched on uh, a facet of what Jean has asked me to do now. And that has to do with his love for God and the hope that he had in Christ Jesus. He was very specific when we were talking about today we didn't know when today was going to be, but uh, we were talking about what was going to happen today. He kind of fretted over the eulogy part, and he had certain songs in mind, some of which we've sung, and we'll sing a couple more here in a bit. But he was adamant that I share the gospel with you because of the strength that he gained from God. And this uh, passage that's up here is one of the last, if not the last verse that he marked in his Bible, particularly verse 2. My help comes from the Lord who created heaven and earth. Gene put his hope in Christ, and that's where he looked for help in time of need. And that's where he wanted us to look. And he was always, as, uh, as Alan pointed out, he was always about that. He was always pointing, and pointing us in that direction. Because, well, he loved God. 
he knew that's where the source of our strength can come from. And he knew that uh, God's plan for us is to live with us forever in eternity. Eternal life. That is his that is his is his desire for us. In first Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Well, let's back up to verse seven. First Timothy chapter four, verse seven says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Now, that's the Apostle Paul. And I don't think Gene would like it very much, us comparing him to the Apostle Paul, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, he fought the good fight. He finished the course. Uh, for us, from our standpoint, we could say it was cut short. The course wasn't as long as it could have been, should have been. But he, he fought the good fight. He finished the course. And Paul says, as Jean could say, I kept the faith. And here's what kept him going. The next verse. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The crown of righteousness that the Lord would, would award. He was looking forward to that. And he knew that it wasn't his own righteousness. The crown of righteousness is not about ours, but about Christ Jesus and what he did. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. And he was raised the third day to eternal life. That was his appearing that Paul mentions here. All those who have loved his appearing when he appeared. That's what he did for us. That is the gospel. That's good news. It doesn't sound like good news that he should have to die. But he did for you and for me. And Gene wanted you to know that if you didn't know it already. That gospel is good news. It's sad that Christ had to die for us. But it's a good thing that he did because without that sacrifice for us, we would still be lost in our sins. Because he shed his blood, our sins could be washed away. His blood was shed for the remission of sins, to buy us back from sin, to, to take away the debt that we owe because of sin. His death, burial, and resurrection made that possible and gives us hope of eternal life. That's the hope that Gene had in Christ. In the future there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. The Lord, the righteous judge. On that last day we're going to be judged according to Christ's words and according to the things that we've done in light of what Jesus has said. Life is like, life has a ledger. We, we can do good things. We can do the good works that God has created for us. And we can add to the good side of the ledger. But we can't do anything to take away from the sin side of our ledger, the things that God has commanded us, desires us not to do. We can't take those away. Christ can take those away. His blood washes away those sins. And God will treat us as if we never committed those sins if those sins have been removed by the blood of Christ. The righteous judge will judge us on that day. One of the good things, another part of the good news that we have because of what Christ did and his position as our advocate on that day, not only is he our, our judge, he'll judge righteously, yes, but he's also our friend. He's also there to mediate as he is now. Mediating between us and God. Our sins separate us from God because he can't look on, on sin. Our sins separate us and God doesn't want that. He doesn't want that separation between us and him. He wants us to be with him. And that is what Gene was about. That was why he was always uh, looking out for the church. 
That's why he was always talking about God and his love for us and his desire for us to be with him, with God, in eternity. It's interesting, and, and Alan, I didn't see that list on, on LinkedIn, but um, the, uh, Gene was a goal setter. He was, he was always wanting to set goals and always wanting to meet them, and I am not surprised that getting to heaven was his first goal. Um, and that's the way he was, right? Look at where you want to be and then work on how to get there. Figure out where you want to be down the road and then find the road to get there. So, Gene would want me to tell you that gospel, the good news, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is the good news. And God calls us to him with that good news. And we have the responsibility to respond to it. The Apostle Paul also wrote in Romans 6 that we die with Christ, we're buried with him, and we're raised up to newness of life at the point of baptism, being buried in water with him and raised up to newness of life. There's where we begin to have the hope of eternal life. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me, through him. And that is the way that we respond to his offer to bring us home to the Father. Gene wanted you to know about it. Gene would want me to encourage you to read the Bible, read the New Testament, read the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the Gospels. Read the story of Jesus. Pick one and read it. He would want me to tell you to turn away from sin in your life so that you can be pleasing to God and God can bring you closer to Him. Removing that sin. Repent of that sin. Turn away from it. Are you willing to confess Christ as God's Son and our Savior? And are you ready to be buried with Him so that you can be dead to self and to sin and be raised up to walk in newness of life, brand new, nothing held against you, free from sin, the guilt of sin. Maybe not the consequences in this life, but the guilt of sin, it's gone. God offers it to us. Gene wanted to make sure that we have that same hope that he had that same strength that comes from knowing the Lord and being able to look to Him for that hope, that strength, uh, knowing where you're going. Gene was able to get through what he went through because of our, our love for him and care. That was important to him. The care that Patty provided, he has said a lot about that. He was so thankful for that. But he always, always had in mind that he could see it through past the end here because God wanted to be in eternity with Gene. And Gene wanted to be in eternity with God. And he wanted that for us. God and Gene want the same thing for you and me. So be sure to think about it. Be sure to, well, read the gospel. And see what you find. You'll find that God loves you. And Gene loves you because God loves you. And he wanted you to have what he had. Because of that, we have the hope of being all together again with Gene. Uh, <clears throat> they say that there's a lot of singing in heaven. And so I think Gene is pretty much where he wanted to get to and be. And you're right, you know, he liked to be in charge. He's probably leading singing up there. <laughs> or trying to. <laughs> or saying, you know, we sang that one already, how about this one? Something like that. But I know that he's enjoying the singing there. And we can look forward to being with him again one day. A couple more songs that he wanted us, uh, wanted us to sing. 345 is in the songbook if you need to. If you're too far in the back and can't see the screen up here, and there's a songbook nearby, 345. Uh, it is well with my soul. Gene had that outlook 
especially in the last, his, his last days here with us. It was well. He was ready. Let's sing. When peace like a
Blessed Be the Tie. Sorry. Our last song, Blessed Be the Tie, is one of the songs that we would sing in Panama before we all went our separate ways to come back home. And uh, in that case, it was always a tearjerker. Probably going to be that today. But we have hope of being all together again. And I think this was, um, I'm going to take a chance and say, it was right at the top of the list for Gene's favorite songs because he loved us so and it, it reminded him that um, love binds us together and we, uh, we look forward to the time when the vicissitudes of this life are, are done and we can all be together happily forever in eternity. Blessed be the tie. Bless me.
I think Jean would be okay with what we've done today, and I, I want you to take something that you've heard today with you. When there are times when you miss him, uh, think about some of the stories that you heard today, and uh, bring them, uh, bring them to your heart and, and contemplate. We will miss him, but we'll see him again. Please stand for, for prayer before we go. Father, we are indeed grateful that we can come into your presence and we can cast our cares upon you. But first, we want to thank you for Jean for allowing our lives to be enriched by him. We thank you for his love and his faith. We thank you for his generosity. We thank you for his commitment to you and for the things that he taught us directly from your word and indirectly through his life that was shaped by his love for your son. Father, we thank you for the example he showed as a husband and father. Father, we thank you for his commitment to truth, his passion in everything that he did. And we are indeed grateful that we could call him our friend. And because of that, our hearts are heavy. Because though we, we do know that, that he lies peacefully in the bosom of Abraham, we trust. We would like to see him in person. And we miss him. And so we ask that you would bind up the wounds, especially of those who knew and loved him the most and the best, that you would be with his family and that you would comfort them and that you would give them peace. And Father, we do pray that the things that we have done and said today will be a source of comfort and encouragement to each of them and in accordance with the wishes of Jean that if there is any of if there is anything amiss in our lives anything that serves as a, a barrier to our relationship with you father we pray that our spending time contemplating his life and faith would in fact motivate us to draw closer to you. I know that he would have no greater legacy than to know that in his death that he brought life through Jesus Christ to one of us. And so, Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we offer this prayer and we ask your blessings. And amen. At this time, we are uh, dismissed, and um, of course, the family has uh, going to meet at the alley home for refreshments afterwards, and that'll be an opportunity to uh, continue sharing in these stories. Thank you for being here.